Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hello, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Today, we are going to talk about marketing and sales, lead generation, visibility, messaging, and live launches. So if you have felt kind of stuck or maybe stagnant, maybe you have been struggling to attract new people into your business, this conversation is going to be for you. With me today is Buki Akoa, who is a marketing and sales strategist. She resides in the UK and we have connected over the past several months. I interviewed on her show and now here she is with me today. And I am really excited to share her wisdom with you. I think um, you're going to have so many takeaways. And if you have been intimidated by live launches in the past, your whole mindset around them is going to be flipped on in today. Without further ado, Buki, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Oh, thanks for having me, Robert. It was a pleasure to be here. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so happy to see your smiling face. So Buki, before we jump in, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and what brought you to this point in your journey? Yeah. So hi, everyone. It's great to be here. So my journey in entrepreneurship has spanned, uh, we're, we're going about uh, almost 12 years now. Um, when I left corporate, so I was um, working as an analyst in London, so I, as I'm based in London, and God led me in a path of real estate for some years. So I, I had a business in property, kind of like lettings and management, that kind of arena, did really well, um, but then didn't sustain that success. And it all went down the pan after some years, and I found myself in, shall I say, like an kind of like a no man's land, like, you know, I don't know if anyone listening has ever kind of had success and lost it. You kind of feel like you're a failure and that anything else you touch is going to fail. And that's how I was feeling like for a good number of years. And so, but I just, um, thank God for God. I always say, thank God for God. (laughs) And I spent some time like just reflecting, praying, seeking guidance, um, and then God led me to, to two, two things, really. Number one, he led me to a book that really helped my journey, um, uh, which uh, was called Millionaire Habits in 21 Days. But in that Millionaire Habits in 21 Days, what God was showing me in that book, it wasn't a Christian book, per se. It was a secular, it was a secular book, but written by a pastor, I believe. But God was showing me in, the, in that book, biblical principles to financial success. And because I'd already lost a lot of money and lost that we had a six-figure business multiple six-figure business that we had lost literally and so that guided me in terms of my mindset to kind of like have the confidence in God to launch out again and then God led me to start my YouTube channel and it was quite strange because it was like and I was like YouTube like so at this point I'm in debt I am like seeking a way forward and God is like you know um, I want you to just share what you have on YouTube. And at that point, I didn't know much about YouTube then. And all I knew about YouTube was that you had to know or have hundreds and thousands of followers to have any significant amount of income. And I'm like, I don't know anybody. No one knows me. Like, I don't want to be broke, Lord. And I was arguing with God back and forth about this whole YouTube thing. So cut a long story short, I did obey that voice I heard. And I started my YouTube channel. And that literally led me into what I do now. Because as I was sharing insights and sharing uh, things that I knew based on my previous business, uh, because I do share from a a, a faith-based perspective, a biblical perspective, I guess those that resonated with what I was saying and how I was sharing it was gravitated towards the message. And I just began to help people, support people. And literally that's kind of what led me here, (laughs) really. Um, And that was probably about, that was just before COVID, actually. It was just before COVID. So, um, and, and that's the start of my journey, really, um, in terms of, like, you know, the online world. Because I was, my first business that I had explained was offline and was kind of bricks and mortar. So this is, like, my online journey. And here uh-huh. we are today. 
So I, I love your story and I, I'm fascinated how you felt that calling to be on YouTube and you were like, no, why would I go on YouTube? And then you did it and all things happened. I'm going to link in the show notes an episode episode that we published not too long ago with uh, Trina Little and we talked all about YouTube. So it, for any listeners who are feeling a calling to be on YouTube or want to dapple into another area of or explore, I should say, another area with search engine optimization, YouTube is a search engine. So it is a really great, powerful tool to have a presence on. So, okay, Buki, since this is, episode isn't necessarily about YouTube, I do yeah. want to yeah. know though, how you are using it to grow your business. So YouTube, as we know, is an opportunity to increase visibility. It's a way to share your messaging. It is a great way to market your business and increase sales, but you're using it also for live launches. Like you have a funnel method that you use. So will you tell us about that? Yes. Yeah, so actually the YouTube is a little bit, uh, it's kind of like a, uh, when I first started, let me start from there. When I first started the YouTube, I was using it uh, more for visibility and I actually linked it with Instagram. And so that was kind of my initial kind of funnel, as it were, and using it to nurture people. So it's a very powerful nurturing tool. And so at, at the moment, that what I use YouTube for is exactly that, nurturing my existing audience. So it's not necessarily my... So um, it's a small channel at the moment. I'd say it's still it's just, just shy of 2,000 2, subscribers at the moment. But even saying that, what it does do, it brings new people, because people that do meet me on YouTube... But more importantly, it's a powerful nurturing tool. Uh, and so those that I do generate leads to come into my my world. And I, so my actual funnel, I, I don't want to explain that, explain that and how it kind of ties in. Or would you want me to go to that later? Yeah, so how it ties in. So my actual funnel, I actually believe really uh, strongly in um, digital products, products. So I do sell products online using ads or using organic marketing, right? And so my low ticket, digital products as what generates leads for me for free, right? At this point in time. So now what I do, I would sell products online, obviously generates an income and which pays for the advertising, which in essence, I don't have to pay for advertising. And so that brings leads into my world uh, and I do it organically. And so those leads obviously are cold, they don't know me, but the products that you create attract people and it gives them some kind of insight about you. And then, I do weekly, I well, I, I I normally do weekly live streams, but it's holiday season now, I do pre-recorded videos, <laughs> but I do weekly videos anyway, at least weekly videos. And those weekly videos obviously nurtures my list. And so when now it's time for a live launch, which I which I was doing more regularly be like uh, beforehand, every other month at least, uh, when I'm doing those live launches, when I find the conversion, I want to say probably 90%, maybe 85, 80 to 85% of people that uh, join my high ticket program have come from buying a product, right? Or buying a product from my low ticket products. Um, and then obviously they, I don't leave them cold. They're nurtured through my video content. And then, hey, presto, um, because of that, the, the, the live, the conversions are quite good when it comes to my live launches. That's how I do it. So let me just clarify this. So you do both free digital products and paid digital products, but most of your clients that end up purchasing from you came in on those paid digital products. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I do, I do freebies. I do freebies and I do paid products, uh, but I'm seeing definitely that those that come into the higher ticket programs are from people who bought a, a low ticket product of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, which I, I've heard someone say a buyer is a buyer is a buyer is a buyer right and so it's like those that buy and not to say that people that, that take freebies don't buy but obviously a conversion rate on that for example I have funnels that is like a a tripwire whereby you have a freebie and on the next page it's a low ticket product but that doesn't even convert very well because the person that's come through has already come through with the mind to get that free thing and so to now sell to them straight away is kind of like a probably not a put, a put off. Whereas if I put a paid thing in front of them, 
that person's already got the mindset to buy something. So I think it, mm -hmm. so I've been doing it for a while and I really do see, um, I do see the difference. Um, quite, yeah, quite a, a phenomenal difference actually. Yeah. Okay. So you bring these people in through either free or paid digital products, and then they're on your email list. So that's like step one of the funnel. Then you're going to nurture them. So you nurture them through, so your funnel looks like they buy, you nurture and you nurture them through YouTube as well as emails or do you I have a, I have a very short e email sequence when it comes to nurturing I, so we still email through we do e a, a nurture sequence through emails but I find that you know and I teach this to my clients as well I just find that video just has an extra layer of um conversion <laughs> right like, it's, just, it's obviously it's this high touch your personality comes through and so I've realized that even though before I used to have these long nurture sequences and, it, and I look through them, I didn't really do as much as when I was seeing actually the weekly video content, as long as it's touching on the right subject, that is really nurturing the people. And so now my YouTube channel has got tons of videos and most people that come on calls me like, I binge watched your channel, right? Because because the wonderful thing about YouTube because there's a kind of long form content, it people can just sit down if they want to for a good couple of hours and just binge watch and listen to your videos. That time they've done it, they've you have been um, what's it called? You have um, you've been kind of you've you've been you've been but also those are brainwashed, but you've been kind of like converting them, right? <laughs> converting them while you're sleeping, right? So you've spent the time to build up this library of content that's helpful. And those that, and because, because of the nature of YouTube anyway, YouTube is obviously a search engine um, platform. People are going there to find answers to questions. They're going there seeking um, guidance. And so if you have content out there to be a guide to them, then if they like what they hear, they will binge watch. And so that automatically will turn them into a very strong, warmer lead when it comes for you to finally sell. So YouTube has, YouTube is a really, I, I, you know, YouTube is a really good place to, to grow your business. And, and it's not just about getting all, and I said before, it's not about getting all the views, literally just for nurturing in itself is really powerful. So I feel like, yeah, that's what it has really done. So yes, coming through the low ticket or freebie, nurture them through the emails, kind of, <laughs> and then I do the weekly, I weekly, um, weekly emails. What I do tend to do in my emails during the week is um, I would maybe direct them to another video. So mm -hmm. maybe I'll do the, the the general weekly video, but maybe like if throughout the week I'll 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 because there's new people coming to my list, I'll, I'll direct them to something else that would be helpful for that week. If there's a theme, oh by the way, watch this video on this, and so that helps as well to get people to kind of like spend time with me while I'm away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And then, okay. So then let's talk, let's shift gears a little bit. So now you've been nurturing these people along. So now it's time to do a live launch. So these are the people that are attending your live launches. Exactly. Exactly. So when it, when it comes to me to promote the live launch, um, I recently just did a paid, like a paid one, actually my first, I think I told you when I spoke, I spoke well, the, the first paid one I did. And actually, yeah, most of the people that came through that, if not all, were those that were already on my list and maybe we had consumed something before. And so they're already part of my world. And so now it's the next step just was easy, right? Mm -hmm. It was an easy next step. So they come into the live launch process. And then I was, I want to say kind of like you're selling, selling to friends, but not necessarily friends, but people that already kind of know you. So there's not like that kind of cold. So I, and here's the other thing. So when I've done launches whereby I've, I've, I've uh, generated leads cold right just like say using ads for example and coming on to my live launch doesn't convert as well doesn't convert as well and um, so if you know and if anyone has not had success in doing that it's because it's exactly that they don't know who you are they have no have no they had no way to consume there's no buy-in unless there's something really strong you put in your funnel that they can actually really kind of you know engage with you um, or it's just, um, mainly pe maybe it was a numbers game, right? When it comes mm -hmm. to that. So, so, so yeah, so I, I find that doing it that way, it's a slightly longer, but I feel like that it works well for me because 
you know, at the end of the day, people are still buying products from you. And also I have a low ticket membership. So actually it does a number, a number of things. My low ticket membership is also the part of my low ticket product is a membership. And so that also gets to know that I can trust a small kind of buy-in. They kind of get to know who I am. And then a lot of people actually convert and upgrade from that into mm -hmm. the higher ticket right? because yeah. they've already got to know. And they've got to taste, taste. You know, the Bible says taste and see. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Lord is They're uh -huh. tasting and see you are really who you say you are, right? And, yeah. I, and I, one thing I would like to say as well, the, the world we're living in now in the online space, people need to try you out. They need to know if you're the real deal. They need to kind of have a buy-in to some degree. Just going off, you know, just cold, or come and buy this 10K program from me and you have hardly know who you are. You know, it's a bit kind of like it's a big ask. Maybe they could have done that a few years back, but I think now people would need time to spend with you, to trust you a bit more because there's so many people out there that say one thing and to do the other, right? Yeah, so yeah. So, so Buki, when you're talking about this live launch, so I'm curious, like and at the end, maybe we can come back to like what you charged for that live launch and what that looked like. So yeah. I've seen live launches that were like, you know, a one day workshop. I've seen, you know, five day master classes. Have you pinpointed like the uh, industry standard, so to speak, the gold standard where this is what you're seeing works the best. Do you do how, how long are your launches and how do you set them up so that they make sense to keep people coming back each day? Right. So I do the five day. Yeah. Other people, people say you did a five day spot until so long. But we have a strategy around the five day and I'm going to disclose the strategy to you. So it's a five day, but we make an emphasis on the third day. And the third day is the masterclass. So we do, so basically we have like, <clears throat> we have tasks. And so what helps people coming back is because there's a promise at the end of the challenge, right? At the end of the challenge, we want to help you to get to this end result. And so there are tasks every single day that is their benefit. And so as long as you are giving good, like, so I think what makes my challenges work really, really well is because the tasks, I'm giving you really good content. Like it's not fluff. Like I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I am helping you. Like my, my posture is service. Whether you buy, you don't buy my posture is service. And so the, the, because the, the launch, I don't necessarily change that. And so that's an offer in itself, right? When, especially when it was free. And so I'm giving you some tasks that will benefit you and your business. And so people come back cause they want, they want to hear more. And so we do, do Q and A. We do answer people's questions, and so that alone is incentivizing people to come back to the challenge. So you have people that have challenges that they're like, "Oh, people drop off." Well, mm, no, actually, I found that there are people, and we have prizes as well. The prizes as well, so that kind of gives it a bit more kind of like you know a fun, a reason to be involved, a reason to stay to the end, a reason to keep 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 going throughout the five days. And when you think about the bigger picture, because I serve women who are doing who are working their business. Five days is a small ask for you to be consistent to run your to, to help me to help you solve a problem in your business. So we wow. do the five days. Uh, but what we do with that five days, though, because we are aware, even though in all the things I've just said, there will still always be drop off. Day three is masterclass day where we come on to well, <laughs> we come on to Zoom. I'm saying well, because they changed Facebook in April and things shifted a little bit. But <laughs> what we used to do really was we'd have live streams. Monday through to Friday, whereas Wednesday was the exception. And Wednesday would be a Zoom. Everyone come on, we can meet each other. We, you know, we get to know, we get to see me, we talk, we chat, you know, Q and A, I run through, but I also open up the program and I show the program. I show what, um, what's involved, if they would like to work with me. So Wednesday really is kind of what they call cart open, but even in that cart open, it's an invitation for a conversation. So it's not just, oh, here's a link, come and buy. It's still, let's have a chat and we open up to have a call. And so we open up to have a conversation. And so I'm really having my launch, it leads people to a call, right? And so that window, and normally it's about, uh, from that Wednesday, normally it's a week. So that Wednesday to Nursley, the following Wednesday, I'm inviting you for calls and conversations regarding the program, which I've talked about on the Wednesday. We still continue to serve you Thursday, Friday. We're giving you tasks, we're doing all the things. Um, but uh, we, we've now made you aware that there is also a way to work together for a longer period, right? 
And so that's what we do. And so but people book calls, people, um, and, and, and literally that, I think because, and the, and the other thing is we encourage to share the wins in the live launch. And so we encourage people to tell people who they are. We encourage networking in the, so it's not just like come over and listen to me, just talk to talk at you for God knows how long. It's a very engaged environment. And so because of that, I think people we meet people there. And I always say this in my live launches, you never know who's in the room. That's right. right. You never know who's in the room. You never know who you're gonna meet, right? And so that also that that statement alone, I know it helps people to kind of okay, let me just share who I am and just you know tell everyone who or what I do. And all of that brings in just fun and fellowship and connection and it makes it a really enjoyable process. It doesn't have to be kind of daunting, which I know people, some people do find it daunting, but I've taught many, many women who've done launches for the first time and they have left absolutely pumped. Like, like, oh my gosh, it was brilliant. They were scared initially, they weren't too sure, but doing it and just knowing that they've been called to help people and serve people and then just seeing the response rate, it's really powerful. So I feel like live launches for me, I mean, I've done the masterclasses, I've done the three days, I've done different things, but what I know has worked and I've kept consistent is the five day. So you, the third day is kind of open cart and you're inviting them to book a call with you, which I love because it doesn't feel like you're selling. You're basically giving them an invitation to get on a call with you so that you can have a conversation to see if you're a good fit, if you can actually help them, if you are the solution they're looking for. So I love that. And then Friday and, or Thursday and Fridays and is it as long? Like, are these one hour sessions each day of the five days or there is Wednesday longer and then Thursday and Friday are kind of like more touch base accountability and back in the Facebook group or are they back on Zoom? Like, how are you doing those? Wednesday's, Wednesday's the only Zoom day normally when with the old structure. Thursday, Friday's back onto live stream again. Um, mine mine I'll say mine not everybody's tends to be slightly longer just because the way I am and the way I've got a lot to say a lot to, a lot to pour out so I tend to do maybe an hour um but then the masterclass might be about an hour and a half possibly two hours so masterclass is, a bit, is much longer um but the um the, the the main time is either between 40 minutes it could be like 20 40 minutes to an hour for the Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, depending. But but I also teach, but then again, and not to scare anyone, because actually those that I teach who are brand new, I say, look, 20 minutes is okay. 20 minutes is fine. You don't have to be there for an hour. 20 minutes is okay. Give them the task, touch base, just whatever needs to happen on that call to really give them some wins and transformation. It could be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever needs to happen, not too long, obviously, but you know, just as long as it, 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 there's some kind of exchange of value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Thursday and Friday, you teach again. And then how long do you leave your cart open? Like, what are what do you recommend people do? So, okay, I'm inviting you to come in, book a call with me. How long do you leave your calendar open for them to be able to access it, to book a call with you? Or does it close it, at the it, end of day Friday? Yeah. No, so I leave it open until the after the following Wednesday. So even there's a five day challenge, we leave the we leave the Facebook group open for t for, for 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 two weeks. So it's like so it's that week and the following week. It's kind of like just an overlap of things that have been happening. There's no teaching really going on. Maybe I'll do my might, might do a bonus appearance here and there. But we would I would close my calendar typically the following Wednesday. So it'll be so if you want to have that conversation, it's Wednesday to Wednesday. It's open and then and 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 the, typically the doors to the program really do close on that day as well um so mm -hmm. we open up the program on that week those are interested so everything happens in that in that kind of that eight day stretch really Wednesday okay to Wednesday, seven day stretch yeah 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 okay and then so let me ask you this like when you when you do these launches how do you decide what you're going to teach on like how do you because I know faith is such a huge part of what you do and how you teach. So yeah. have you discovered like this almost magical balance of like money mindset and business strategy and things like that? Because our audience is mostly, you know, 
life coaches, health coaches, business coaches. So there's a lot of people that are in the coaching space. And I know that you're a marketing and sales strategist, so a little bit different, but we're still talking to a lot of people who do launches or, and especially who are interested in doing these live launches. So I'm just curious, like how you weight your content. Interesting question. Okay. Right. So, um, Hmm. I think the answer to that one. How do I, how do I work my content? I, I, I have this saying, I live as led, right? That's, that's my fundamental, right? Let me, let me start there. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yes, I get it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And what that means for those that don't know what that means is like, you know, sometimes things just feel right. Right. And, um, and I've tried different things before. So now I, I don't even, here's the thing. I'm not changing my content for my launch now. I'm just bringing new people into the same presentation. So the presentation is literally more or less the same, but because I have different people come in, I can tweak what I'm saying to those who are live on the call with me. So when it comes to the actual foundation of the the, the five days, the first day is heavy on uh, faith and mindset because it's getting you started, it's getting you in that, you know, uh, uh, belief mindset that is possible for you right um and then the, the other three days well no the other three days is, is is heavily on strategy but then the masterclass I'm I do 50 50 percent I do a lot of I, I mix that because the masterclass they a lot of people that follow me and I know my ideal client they are interested in in the faith-based part they're interested mm-hmm. in biblical part well how does that how do I run my business we've got at the center how do I how do I bring all these principles into into marketing and sales right and so the master class is like okay this is where I want everyone to come so I speak a lot on that and I think it's probably a 50 50 split on that particular day but the mm-hmm. Tuesday Thursday, Friday is probably heavily strategy so if that kind of gives you an idea yeah I of- love it Yeah, I think that's very, very helpful as people are trying to envision this, like, well, what am I even going to talk about? So when you mentioned earlier, you talked about your Facebook group and you said it's open for those eight days. So do you do a pop-up Facebook group for these live launches and then close it down? Yeah. Okay. So I have a free group that I, I have tried to, I've done it in that group before, but I find that it's not an intentional place for the challenge because there's lots going on in the challenge we want it to be really focused because i do like you know t- tasks day one task day two tasks day three tasks people who come in and don't know what's going on they could kind of disrupt it so i just tend to do a pop-up group for that reason mm-hmm. um but you can still do it if you have like a small facebook group that's a free one that's not as maybe engaged i would you could still do your challenge in that facebook group so don't think you have to do a pop-up group if you don't want to but the pop-up group is just there solely for the launch So if we have a lot of people who don't want to be on social media, so if they're not on social media, they can do the entire with this. If you had to tell someone one sales strategy that they could master that would change how they approach their sales or how they approach their business, because once they get people on the call, they still have to sell to them ultimately. I mean, hopefully they're warmed up. Hopefully they've been nurtured and they're just ready to sign up and say yes, but not everyone is. So there's still some selling involved. So what is your number one go-to sales strategy tip? Not not tip, that's too remedial, but strategy that you suggest people use that helps you get the conversion rates you get. Um. So the other thing I say is I like to sell before selling so actually the the everything before the sales call is really important because Uh the sales call doesn't feel like a sales call it literally is like like, uh, i'm already sold when they come on the call because everything leading up to that I, I'm not, it's not a hard sell at all. I, it's just a case of a conversation and they really want, but when they book the call, they want to work with me just about the, 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 the nitty gritty and the ins and outs of what that looks like and how we can work it out between the two of us, right? So in terms of the number one sales strategy, and here's the thing. So honestly, I teach this 
so I'm blue in the face. And this is my main thing. And I really believe for the life of me, it's just that it's the best advice I can give anybody. Know your person. Honestly, I know it sounds basic, but if when you know your person, i.e. you're really clear on your avatar, your specific person, the person that you are called to, the person that you know you have the, all the good goodies for, like when that person comes into your space, your communication, I because I'm, I'm I'm very big on your messaging. And so because I know my person, everything I do is designed to speak to that woman. Mm-hmm. And so my selling happens. That's why I said marketing and sales strategy. My selling happens in the marketing, really, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yes. The sales is happening there winning stage because I'm mindful who I'm speaking to I'm mindful of their pain points I'm mindful of the things that make them tick I'm mindful of what they desire I'm mindful of their challenges I'm mindful of their obstacles I'm I just know my person really really well and so everything I say is 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 focused on her Uh and so that's really my that's and I think that that tip really or strategy really will help you in any sales strategy you choose Yes. And like it, it will work with everything and anything. When challenges are, people don't stop doing them, or when you if Facebook stops or YouTube stops, or whatever doesn't work again, right? In these worlds, this tip will is a lifelong for any business for the forever. Like as mm-hmm. you know your person and you understand their deepest pain points, their 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 biggest desires, you understand their values, their belief system their struggles, what they say behind the scenes when no one's listening, right? The mm-hmm. obstacles they're faced, all the things. Like just get, if you understand that, when you speak, you are selling. Yes. Because so, there's the emotional transfer mm-hmm. between you and your person and they are so, they're like, here's, the, I'm sorry, let me just say this quickly. I say, this is my, this is my thing. When you can explain your ideal problem better than they can, what happens is they not, they feel you understand them. Mm-hmm. And that keyword understanding is what causes there to be a shift in them wanting to take action to get to know you more and to work with you. That's what yes. I <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So this is why I have always focused on, and I used to always use the phrase sell without selling, because when you create your personal brand and you identify what differentiates you, and then you communicate that to your soulmate client, because you understand their pain points, what it, their needs, wants, and desires are, you can create that transformation that and sell without even having to sell. And so I love that it's building the no love and trust factor before they even get on a call with you. And it becomes this, and because so many people are afraid of selling that you can actually completely change your mindset around it to the point where you can have confidence showing up because you know, I've got what these people need and they are ready to open their wallet because I have the solution to their problem. Okay, Buki, this has been fabulous. You dropped so many, so many, so many valuable points. So tell the listeners how they can connect with you, learn more from you, maybe even work with you. Yes, come and join me on my YouTube channel. Come and say hi on YouTube, uh, Bible-based business with Buki Ekoa. Um, Come and join me there, um, hang out with me. Um, and I think that's probably where I would leave people to. I have a, I have a podcast as well. Podcast is Kingdom Wealth Conversations. You can listen to me on audio. Um, as well come and hang out with me there and I have a free Facebook group as well which is wealthy kingdom focused women building six figure businesses online so any of those places come and hang out come and say hi and yeah we'll leave it there (laughs) all right thank you so much for being here listeners if you enjoyed this episode please share it with a friend in business share it with another believer in business just help spread the word because I think some of these strategies that we talked about today are really key for lead generation to make sure your messaging is solid, to increase your overall visibility online and grow your businesses. So also please leave a rating and review because that's how I can continue to get great guests like Buki on the show and gives me motivation and inspiration to keep showing up too. All right, friends, thanks for being here and I will see you all next time.